Okay, we're going to look at one more substitution example. This one is going to be a triple integral. So we'll look at extending that theorem that we talked about before to triple integrals. All right, so we are supposed to use the equation of a general ellipsoid. So that's what we have given here to find a formula for the volume of an ellipsoid. All right, so we know that to find the volume of a three-dimensional region, we can just do a triple integral over the region of just one dv. So that'll give us the volume of that ellipsoid. So if I think a little bit about the geometry of our ellipsoid, that would be our region D. Uh, so from this equation, our ellipsoid would intersect the x-axis at plus or minus a, the y-axis at plus or minus b, and the z-axis at plus or minus c. And so I could set that integral up, that ellipsoid would be x simple, y simple, or z simple. The problem is that if I set that integral up, my equations for my boundaries are going to be plus or minus square roots of different expressions, and those are going to become difficult to integrate on that second integration. So the difficulty here is really in the equations of the boundaries for our region D that we're integrating over. So we can extend the idea for substitutions for double integrals to substitutions for triple integrals. So just remembering the conditions that we had before, we need to ensure that our function, in this case it would be a function of three variables, should be continuous on our region that we're integrating over. Uh, in this case our function is 1, so that's continuous everywhere. And then we need to think about substitutions and inverse substitutions. For this one, I'm going to let u equal x over a, v equal y over b, and w equal z over c. So those will be our substitutions, and then our inverse substitutions, I would need to solve for x, y, and z. These are all fairly simple, so I'll just multiply through by the denominator and get my inverse substitutions. These substitutions would give us a one-to-one -one transformation from our region D in the XYZ coordinate system to a region G in UVW coordinate system. And I'm just going to go up here to the equation of my surface and make my substitution. So in place of X over A, I'll put U. In place of Y over B, I'll put V. And in place of Z over C, I'll put W. So we'll get our new equation u squared plus v squared plus w squared equals 1. So in uvw coordinate system that would be a sphere of radius 1 centered at the origin. Okay and so then the other thing I need to be careful about when I do my substitutions is that Jacobian and I need to check that my partial derivatives will all be continuous. When we did that before we had a Jacobian for a function of two variables. Here we'll extend that to three variables. And so we're going to have a determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix. We'll need derivatives of x with respect to each of our three new variables, u, v, and w. And then similarly for y and z. So when I find all of those partial derivatives, partial derivative of x with respect to u will be a, and then the other two partial derivatives of x with respect to the other variables will be 0. And we have a similar relationship for y and z. And so the determinant of that matrix, this works just like when you do cross products of vectors. Uh, if I expand along this top row here, I would have a times the determinant of what's left when I eliminate the row and column that A is in, so BC minus 0. And then when I do these other two entries, I'll have 0 times the determinant of what's left, and then 0. So my determinant is just ABC. Notice also that all of my partial derivatives are just constants, so those are continuous everywhere. So we can go ahead then and just transform our integral. I'll just go back up here to the top and do that transform our triple integral to a new triple integral over our region G in UVW space. Uh, my function that I'm integrating is 1. I need my determinant dV. And this one is actually one where you can now just write down the answer. A, B, and C are constants, so you can pull that outside of the integral sign. And then this integral that's left would be the volume of G. Since G is a sphere of radius 1, you actually probably know the volume of that. 
All right, so we end up with the volume for formula of an ellipsoid given by this expression here. I'll write that out here to this side, 4 thirds pi a, B, C. So it's similar to the volume formula for a sphere. Remember that the volume formula for a sphere is 4 thirds pi r cubed. Uh, the idea here is that instead of a radius uh, that's the same in all different directions, you've got sort of different dimensions in different directions. So that should be easy to remember if you ever need to use that.